So a zero force member in a truss is a member that doesn't support any loading. Or in other words, it's just redundant. And the reason why there is redundancy in trusses is so that if the load changes, the redundant support or redundant member can take over some of that loading if necessary and it provides extra safety and extra stability. But what we need to do oftentimes when we're analyzing trusses is it's very helpful to find those zero force members by observation so that we can simplify things. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to go over how you can identify those zero force members and what that means in a truss. So if you find this helpful, please subscribe. So the way you're going to identify the zero force members is you're going to go joint by joint and look and see which members might be zero force members. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to draw an equilibrium equation of the joints where members come in where we think they might be zero force members. And we're going to start here at joint A. And we're going to find that both of these members, AF and AB, are zero force members. So our free body diagram is going to look something like this. And we're going to set up our coordinate system where this is the x-direction and this is the y-direction. They're pinned together here at joint A, and this member we'll call AB, and this member AF. And so if we set up our equilibrium equations, we'll start with the sum of the forces in the x-direction, and it's in equilibrium, so we're going to set it equal to zero. And so you'll notice that the only force acting in the x direction is going to be this AB member or the force inside that member that might be there because this was a 90 degree angle. And so the force in AB is the only force that could be acting in the x direction. And so we'll notice because there's no other force that FAB equals zero. So there's no force in that member. It is a zero force member because it's carrying no loading. And if we set up the equilibrium equation for the y direction, we'll find the same thing because member AF is the only thing going in the y direction. And so therefore it will also be equal to zero and it is a zero force member. Okay, so we've established that these two members are zero force members we are going to move on to our point D up here that is similar, but it's a slightly different situation. So we have our free body diagram here where this is member DC and this one's member ED and the angle between them is theta. Well, this time we're going to set up our coordinate system a little different so that this is the x direction and this is the y direction so that member ED is going only in the x direction and so if we set up our equilibrium equations for the y direction we'll say the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero so the y component of this force in DC if we drew a triangle here, would be the force in DC multiplied by the sine of theta to get this side, which is in line with the y axis. So we would have F DC sine of theta. But there are no other forces acting in the y direction. So we just have the F DC sine of theta equals zero. And we know because this angle is not zero and it's not 180, sine of theta is not going to be zero. So in order for this to be true, FDC has to be zero to make this be in equilibrium. And so we know that FDC is a zero force member. And so if we set up our equilibrium equation for the x direction, that will equal zero and once again, we'll have the F DC, and this time cosine of theta, plus the force in ED, 
but we already know that FDC is zero because we found that, that out here, and so this is all just going to be zero. So FED equals zero also. So we know that both of these forces are zero in both of these members. And so we have found two more zero force members. So to sum that up, if you have a joint where only two members go into it and there are no external forces and those members are not collinear or in other words they're not in line with each other meaning that the angle between them is not 180 or zero degrees then like these two this one's 90 degrees and this one's some angle of theta that's not 180 or zero making it so that if as long as they're not collinear and as long as there are only two members in there and no forces acting on it, both of those members going into that joint are going to be zero force members. Okay, so moving on to this truss where we have three members going into one joint, we're going to look at joints D and C and find that these two members here are both the zero force members as well. And so we're going to draw this free body diagram where this is point D and you have this member we'll call it AD this member ED and this member DC and this is a right angle there if we once again set up our coordinate system a little bit different just turn from what it would be normally we can have this member only going in the x direction and these two members are only going in the y direction and so if you set up your equilibrium equation for the forces in the x direction you will find that member AD is the only thing going in the x direction and therefore it is the only thing that can have a force and what we found in here with this truss is that that means that that force will be zero. So the force in this member is going to be zero, so it will be a zero force member. Now, if we change it a little bit by going to the, um, the joint C, we will find that this is not a 90 degree angle from it. But if we set up our equilibrium equation for the x direction, we will find that the x component of the force in this member is going to be FAC and then the sine of this angle will get us that side so sine of theta and that's the only force acting in the x direction so in order for this to be equal to zero once again just like we had a point at joint D up there the sine of theta is not going to be equal to zero because theta is not zero degrees and it's not 180 degrees. So FAC has to be zero in order for this equation to be true. And so once again, we found another zero force member. All right, guys, that's what zero force members are and that's how you find them. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering where my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you find this helpful and want more videos like this, please subscribe.